Okay, everyone. Um, in a few seconds, it's uh, going to be our next session. So if everyone takes their seat and gets really comfy if you're sitting at home watching this. Um, okay, so let's give a warm welcome to Otto, and he will talk about advanced techniques for testing and updating WordPress core and plugins to avoid regressions. So welcome, Otto. Thank you. Ja det där förresten så talar jag också svenska, det är mitt andra modersmål. Men eftersom det här är en internationell konferens så drar vi nu på engelska den här presentationen. Yes. Jag kommer från ett bolag i Finland som heter Seravo. Och vi gör WordPress drift och uppehåll. Och med fokus på uppehåll och det betyder bland annat att vi gör uppdateringar och massor och massor av uppdateringar hela tiden. All right, so... Yeah, so... I'm a, I'm a CEO, but I do all kinds of things, and I, I'm a very technical CEO, and I have a long background in WordPress and a long background in open source in general. I think my first WordPress blog was, I made it in 2005, and I've, before and with WordPress, I've contributed to the full stack, including Nginx and the Linux kernel and MariaDB and Redis and so on. And I've also done a few translations into Swedish. So today I'm going to talk about updates, which I do a lot at our company, Seravo, because we do upkeep and that includes updating customer sites, both core and plugins. So first, first of all, why update? Well, the obvious reason is because of security. If you have a website 24-7 online somewhere, it's constantly being bombarded by all kinds of automated bots trying to hack it. And if there are any publicly known vulnerabilities on your site, somebody's gonna use them. So you need to make sure that, because of security at least, you need to keep your sites updated. Also, there could be all kinds of different bugs in your software. It's nice for the users that they get fixed when they get new versions of the software. And sometimes new, so new versions of the software bring new features which benefit the users. So users want updates and latest software. Why not to update? The same reasons, because when you get new code, there can be new bugs, new security bugs, new other bugs. And sometimes software developers deprecate old features which your users might still be using and it's not what they want the users might not want to have the new version because of that. Here's a story I like a lot related to WordPress updates. All of you have heard about the Panama Papers leak. How many of you had known that it started because of an unupdated WordPress plugin? Right, so they had an old version of, of Revolution Slider on their website and the intruder used the known vulnerability in it to enter the WordPress server. And then when they were on the WordPress server, they had an easier access into the internal network. And then they found the Microsoft Exchange server, which was really old and had even worse security than WordPress. And then they downloaded all the emails and the rest is history. There's a good case analysis on the WordFence, WordFence blog. Now my timer went away. And if you're interested, please go and read it. It's quite fun. And this story teaches you that you really need to take care of updates. And especially if you're a capitalist, don't use plugins that have a red logo and the name revolution in it. <laughs> All right, so everybody must keep your WordPress sites secure. And that's why you need updates. If not else, then because of security. So, the problem, why isn't everybody updating all the time? I'm sure you know the problem. Because of this, because uh, updates, they can have negative consequences. In the worst case, it may, might break the site completely, so people are afraid of just going and clicking update all the time. And WordPress nowadays is much better than it used to be a few years ago, there's now automated updates built in, into WordPress and it, it has some kind of 
failure checking also built in, but it's not ideal yet. And one of the biggest principal problems in WordPress is that security updates and other updates are not separated. For example, if you have a Linux distribution and a Linux box, then you all only get you can subscribe to only get security updates to that Linux box, but the WordPress ecosystem doesn't really have that. Okay, there are minor version updates in core. For example, from 4.6.0 to 4.6.1, that was a purely bug fixing and security update. But then the major version updates, they bring in bug fixes and new features. And then if you look at the plugins, any update in any plugin can bring in, in anything. There's no separated security updates for plugins really at all. And if you download stuff from WordPress.org, then you at least get updates, but in the worst case, you might have a theme or a plugin that you've taken from some third party website, and there might not be no kind of update system in place at all. So, WordPress isn't really that mature yet in updates, but let's hope it improves over time. And specifically, the problem is the plugins. So, it's a strength of WordPress that there are so many plugins, but it's also a weakness in WordPress that there is so many crap plugins. And the current WordPress.org, they have an initial quality review when you submit a plugin, but when you put updates to your plugin, there's no quality review at all, and there's no CE, CI system and WordPress.org or anything. So most of the problems when customer sites break, it's because of the plugins, WordPress core is very high quality nowadays. So what's the solution? One solution you might think of is rolling back. If you have a bad update, then you just put in the old files, the old version, and that's it. First of all, how many of you are sure that you have fresh backups that actually work? Do you test your backups anyway? And are they off-site if you have a bigger problem with your website? So this is, this is the first step. People usually neglect backups. It's a human nature. And then in WordPress, we have the problem of that most of the settings and contents are in the database. And if you update a new version of your software, they might update something in the database. And then rolling back is not possible simply by copying the old version of the software there. You might also need to revert your entire database to the version it was before the update. So this is not very convenient. Rolling, rolling back in production is not good because you, first of all, you might have downtime. downtime. Your, your visitors might see that your site is down and see, see the errors. And then if you need to revert also the database, the rollback, then you might lose all posts. Or if you have a successful e-commerce site and you had orders made in after the update and you roll back your database, then you will lose those orders and that's absolutely a no-go. And then sometimes the update might screw up the site completely. And sometimes, sometimes that you even can't access VP admin. And sometimes it might screw up something minor, which you might not even notice immediately, but you notice it two days after. These are bo both bad things, and I leave it up to you to figure out which is the worst, worst case, complete breakage or partial breakage. Anyway, you don't want to have that, and you don't want to do rollbacks in production. So what our recommendation is and what we do for our customers is that we do shadow updates. So how does that work? We make a copy, an identical copy of the customer website, and we call it a shadow. It has the same URLs and everything, but it's not visible for the public. It's only visible for the admins and the customer. And then we update that shadow, and then we test the shadow that there's no regressions, and only after we're sure that there's no regressions, then we put those exactly same updates in production. And this is how we, how we make sure that the updates go as good as they can. This is not completely foolproof. Of course, it depends on how good tests you have, but this is much better than 
what people are doing on average at the moment. We have a blog post that explains this in detail, but I'm gonna say some insights now in this talk. And for example, you can see our, what I tell you now is a simplified version of what we do. You can read the whole, whole blog post and look up our complete system online. All right, and all of this testing we do is done using open source software. We, we, love, we love open source and we love the WordPress community and there's lots of benefits in using stuff that also other people use. So we are happy to share how we do this. So first of all, we use RSpec. That's a Ruby tool. It's a very mature test runner. And then we use a tool called Kapubara. It's also in Ruby. And that is a way, it's a toolkit you can code tests in, so it virtually navigates, it goes to some page and clicks some buttons and so on, just like an end user would do. And then we have PhantomJS, which is a headless virtual browser. So you can run these tests without having a, a full graphical environment. You can run these tests on the server side easily. And then we use Graphics Magic. It's an improved version of Image Magic for visual comparison. And if you want to check out the technical details, our project template is on GitHub and it's open source. You can use it if you want. It has also, we also have a Vagrant image that includes all of this. And our docs are also obviously online for anybody to read. Here is an example of the RSpec test. You can probably imagine what this does. It opens uh, the login page, and then it checks, is there a login button? If there is, then this test passes. passes. Here's a continued example of the same scenario. Once you see that the login button uh, form is there, then you can have a, then this test can fill in username and password and click login and verify that after that it sees a VP admin bar, which is proof that it actually succeeded in logging in to the VP admin. And this is, this is in Ruby and this is quite easy to write and the language feels quite natural as you can see in this example. Okay, all right, so the good, good thing with this is that you can write, if you for example have an e-commerce site and you have a specific, for example, some system where customers or the end, end visitors for example, sign up for an event and pay for the ticket, then you can write tests that signs up for the event and pays for the ticket, and then always, as long as the test passes, you can be sure that at least your core business process works, and you're not losing money because of a badly gone update. So this is, this is integration tests is the core. Also, sometimes an update can destroy something in maybe maybe change your fonts or do something to the images or something less which doesn't perhaps destroy your business process but it will make you look bad so so you also need visual regression tests so visual regression tests are based on that you take a screenshot before the update and then a screenshot after the update and then you compare those images and then you can see the differences here is the visual version of it and the line how to do this in with graphics magic. But obviously as we're running this in a server environment, there's no, we don't want humans to spend time looking at these images initially. We just start with letting computers look at the differences and with this command we get out as a figure the difference and then we can make rules that for example if the change is bigger than 2%, then we don't want to accept this update or something like that. Right. Then to some challenges that we have. For example, especially in visual regression tests, you need to think of where you draw the line between an acceptable change and uh, something, what do you think, what do you consider a failure, what's in regression for you? Because 
it's okay for the website to evolve and for plugins to do new things and maybe it's okay for <coughs> some font might change slightly or there might be some more padding or white space or whatever. That might be okay, at least considering that you would rather have the latest version of the plugins and teams and such than an old version but the perfect white space or something like that. So this is something you need to think of and you need to have some experience in doing the updates to find a good balance between what's, uh, what's in the long term best strategy in what's an acceptable change and what do you consider a failure. And of course robots are very good at running these tests and they are very good at telling you that the tests succeed but if the tests fail then the robots are qu quite, quite hopeless at that moment. You, it's difficult to automate fixing the problems. So when you do this testing, you need to make sure that you also have people who are watching over the tests and somebody that can go in there and investigate why the tests are failing. And then you might need to write new tests and so on. So we kind of automating regression tests is about automating the easy part so that humans have more time to focus on the difficult parts. So I don't think we will ever fully automate everything because humans are then needed to solve the problems. All right, that was my presentation of updates. <laughs> now we have five minutes for questions. And by the way, my slides will be Please follow me on Twitter because I will post my slides there soon so you can then check out all these commands and names of the tools we use. Uh, okay, so we have time for questions. Um, anyone up for a first question? Don't be shy. Yeah, in the very back. We'll do a try to throw it again, see if everyone survives. So keep throwing it backwards. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned you you were using an exact replica, including the same URLs. Uh, yes. And uh, I'm curious, with uh, for e-commerce, do in your experience, do all like uh, payment processors have uh, have um, staging environments that you, so that you can actually run a full transaction, or do you have to do you end up having to fake that kind of thing? You you, you can you can do it multiple ways. You can use. Uh, if the payment provider has a staging environment, then you can put in your tests that you change the payment endpoint to the test environment, or you can do payments that cost zero or one cent or something like that, because you're paying it to yourself, so then you can roll back that transaction with another test if you want. And Especially testing payments is quite hard because you need to consider what, w what will it cost you and what's the does, do you need to do some extra accounting and and so on? But you might want to test with the production version still because then you know that your payments are actually working all the way and it's not just the payment API replaying and telling telling you okay. H how does your customers do it? Do you test? Well, there's there's various ways. There's this is kind of a there's no one solution fits all in this domain. Thanks. Uh, did we have one more person back, or did I, was I wrong? No? Um, I, for one, have a question. You have a long background in WordPress and Linux and open source software in general. Uh, I think you've been using WordPress since 2004, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what do you have like uh, for a vision in the future? What do you think w will happen coming to testing and more the professional things that happen in WordPress? Do you see any future? Well, I. Well, for example, this Git issue, that WordPress.org is not on Git still. It has mirrors, but it's actually not developed in Git. And because it's not developed in Git, it suffers from many things. It, it can't have different branches and lieutenants merging those branches and so on. So I think that's slowing down the development of WordPress. And I hope that will improve. And in general, I hope that people who work with WordPress and who kind of 
get introduced to the open source community through WordCamps and great events like this. I hope that you will also reach out to other parts of the stack you are using and learn and contribute and learn how the other open source projects work because WordPress is a kind of a forerunner in user friendliness and inclusiveness and things like that, but it's not perhaps a forerunner in, in technical excellence. So I hope that you who get introduced into open source through WordPress also reach out to other word open source projects and learn how they use version control and how they use automated tests and how they do different things in general and then kind of cross pollute those things. You can, you can take user friendliness to other projects and then bring technical stuff from, from them into WordPress. And I think that the, that the uh, development with the REST API, that's going to a very good direction. But then there are some other things which I'm worried about that you are trying, you are using WordPress as a content storage system, but the WordPress database model is quite crap and it gets really, really slow if you have lots of post meta stuff and so on. So there's certainly lots of things that need to develop, but the momentum is big and the future looks bright. Yeah, uh, it's an old system and it has a lot of challenges. Uh, I understand you'll be joining us tomorrow in the Contributor Day. Yes, uh, I will have a workshop about debugging WordPress sites with xDebug. So if anyone wants to get started with this, uh, you'll be open for questions and helping people out and yes. showing. Also, I'll be in Stockholm for one and a half weeks. So if you want to, uh, or I want to meet more WordPress experts and have in-depth discussions later on, so please grab me by the sleeve if you want to invite me to your office later on this week or next week. I'm happy to come. Yeah. Um, if someone has one last question before lunch, otherwise I'll just give a few tips on the lunch info and things. No? Uh, everyone's hungry. Uh, before you leave, make sure to grab a t-shirt. It's just down on the other side of the lounge. Uh, there's a t-shirt for everyone. Sorry, you guys on the stream. Um, if you're really keen, you could try to send one if there's one over. Um, there's also a few spots left for the Contributor Day, so make sure to sign up for the Contributor Day, and that's done on the same place that you find the t-shirts. So go grab a t-shirt, make sure you get here tomorrow for Contributor Day, and have some lunch. And the lunch is down the corridor, so just down the way here. And we'll see each other back at the keynote at half past one, and then this track will open again at two. So have some lunch. <laughs> <laughs>